What's happening, everybody? It's Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's plow through our biology playlist. In the last videos, we talked about introduction to the cardiovascular system, the cardiac electrical conduction system, and the cardiac cycle. Today, it's time to talk about blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Let's go. But before we go, do we have any other vessels in your body? Yes, we also have lymph vessels or lymphatics. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's review to see if you remember. We start here in the left ventricle that contains oxygenated blood. Left ventricle is gonna pump that oxygenated blood through the aortic valve. The aortic valve is open, mitral valve is now closed. All right, oxygenated blood is here in the aortic valve. The aortic valve will take it all over the body. This is the systemic circulation. And then we'll end up with arteries. After the arteries, arterioles. After the arterioles, capillaries. And then after that, blood is gonna ooze from these capillaries until we reach the cells. Each cell is gonna take oxygen and nutrients from the arterial side and is gonna release carbon dioxide and waste onto the venous side. The veins will take this deoxygenated blood into the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. They will end up in the right atrium. Right atrium is gonna contract and pass the blood to the right ventricle via the tricuspid valve. When the tricuspid valve is open, the mitral valve is also open, but the pulmonic valve is closed and the aortic valve is closed. Now blood is in the right ventricle. This is deoxygenated blood, of course. Right ventricle is gonna contract at the same moment as the left ventricle, and the right ventricle is gonna pump this deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary chunk, right pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, to the right lung and the left lung. The lung will take the carbon dioxide, breathe it out, and then breathe oxygen in. Lovely oxygenated blood, bring it to pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Then the left atrium will contract, get that oxygenated blood and push it to the left ventricle through the mitral valve. And then you repeat the cycle over and over and over again. If your heart rate is 100 beats per minute, this is happening 100 times every minute. Here is the heart pumping oxygenated blood to the aorta. Aorta is giving it to arteries and then arterioles and then capillary bed or capillaries and then venule, that's a small vein, then veins, inferior and superior vena cava, right atrium. Remember when we said before that arteries have stronger walls than veins. Arteries can withstand and shoulder higher pressure than veins because of their strong, robust wall. Moreover, arteries are closer to the heart. That's why they have high pressure. And since they need to have high pressure, they better develop stronger walls. Form follows function. Here is your right atrium. Inferior vena cava from below, superior vena cava from above. The pressure in the right atrium is the central venous pressure, which is equivalent to the pressure upstairs right here. And here is your internal jugular vein. When you see a cardiologist examining the neck veins, the cardiologist is examining this doofus right here, internal jugular vein. So right internal jugular vein on the right side and left internal jugular vein on the left side. Each jugular vein is gonna join a subclavian vein. The right internal jugular is gonna join the right subclavian. And the left internal jugular is gonna join the left subclavian. Nice. Once they join each other, they change into brachiocephalic vein. One on the right, one on the left. Thank you. After this, the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein are gonna join each other and make the superior vena cava, which is gonna end up in the right atrium, just close by the sinoatrial node, if you remember. That's cool, Metacosis. Do you have another story for the inferior vena cava? Of course I do. So let's talk about your feet. Where are they draining? They are draining directly into the IVC. However, the gut has a special situation because the gut digests and absorbs. Absorbs what? Food, carbohydrate, fat, and protein but not the big stuff. I'm talking about the micromolecules. We're talking about glucose. We're talking about amino acid. We're talking about free fatty acids, etc. And when you absorb stuff, you move it from the gut and into the blood. What kind of blood? Venous blood. That's gonna end up in the portal vein. Send this lovely food that we have just absorbed.
into the liver because the liver is the lab of your body. Hashtag metabolism. After this, the liver will send all of this good stuff into the hepatic veins. So there is a huge difference between portal vein and hepatic vein. Portal vein is before the liver. Hepatic is after the liver. Portal vein is going towards the liver. Hepatic vein is going away from the liver. Okay, drain away from the liver into what? Into the inferior vena cava, which is going to end up in the right atrium. What's the definition of an artery? Oh, I know medicosis. An artery is something that carries oxygenated blood. Oh, shut up. That's not the definition. The definition of an artery, it's a vessel that's going to carry blood from the heart to somewhere else. The vein is a vessel that's carrying blood from an organ to the heart. That's the definition. This is always true. This doesn't change. No exceptions. Whether you're talking about adults, it does not change. That's the definition. What changes is the circumstances. In adults, arteries are usually carrying oxygenated blood with the exception of pulmonary veins. But if you look at the umbilical artery, it's carrying deoxygenated blood. Moreover, adult veins are carrying deoxygenated blood, except pulmonary vein, but the umbilical vein in the embryo is carrying oxygenated blood. If you look at my forearm, you'll find one artery known as the brachial artery accompanied by two veins, cephalic and basilic veins. But if you look in the umbilical cord of the embryo, you'll find two arteries called umbilical arteries, only one umbilical vein. This can change, but this never changes. An artery is a vessel that takes you from the heart and away from the heart. A vein is something that takes you towards the heart. We've talked about this before, if you remember. We have four valves in the heart, and we have valves in some vessels like the veins. Except pulmonary veins. They do not have valves. Tell me about the four heart valves. We have one valve with two cusps, known as the mitral valve. Everything else has three cusps, including tricuspid, aortic, and pulmonic. Mitral and tricuspid together are called atrioventricular valves because they are between the atria and the ventricles. Aortic and pulmonary are called semilunar valves because their cross-section looks like half a moon. Semilunar. Artery arterioles. And then we also have meta-arterioles, and they possess this pre-capillary sphincter. This is like a valve. If you want blood to the, go to the capillaries, open the valve. Okay, blood is going to go from arterial, capillary, venial. Thank you so much. But what if I'm busy? What if I want to go quickly back to the heart without bothering with the capillaries? Or what if I'm trying to regulate heat in your skin, vasodilation, vasoconstriction? to dissipate heat or preserve heat respectively. What should I do then? Well, depending on the specific circumstances, you can choose to go the other route, the back door. What's that? The meta-arterial. You have a central channel here and thoroughfare channel here. This will take you to the venule quicker by passing the capillary bed. Let's say I'm freezing in the winter. Do you think my skin is gonna give blood to the capillaries? Shut up! If I give all of this blood to the capillaries, they will dissipate heat, they will evaporate heat, and I will get even colder. Therefore, shut this nonsense down, get the blood quickly to go to the vein, so that we preserve the blood to the vital organs, such as heart and brain. But what if I'm in the summer? Well, open it up. Open everything up. Dilate everything so that we can dissipate heat and sweat. Here's a beautiful artery, okay? Let's take a cross section in that artery. Let's do it. You will see that the wall of the artery has three layers. As you see, here is the wall of the artery, which is solid. And here is the lumen of the artery. It's a cavity that should contain blood, of course, because this is artery. Oxygenated blood, that is. Unless you are the pulmonary artery. You get the idea. Let's talk about the wall of the artery. The wall has three layers. Each is called a tunica. Remember when Caesar used to wear a tunic, which is like a coat? Yep, we have three coats around the lumen. An intimate coat. It's like your underwear, very intimate and close to the lumen. Lovely endothelium lining your cavities. No pun intended. Horrible analogy, I'm sorry. And this tunica intima contains the endothelium, which is standing on top of a basement membrane. The basement membrane is connective tissue, but the endothelium is epithelial tissue. Thank you. Then you have tunica media in the middle. What does it have? Smooth muscles, elastin, and collagen. It's very strong. That's why arteries are stronger than veins, because they have a very thick tunica media with tons of muscles. 
The outermost layer is the tunica adventitia, and it has connective tissue. Remember, your body contains four types of tissue. Epithelium, connective, muscles, and nerves. Your artery contains all types of tissue. How about nerves? Yep, there are some nerves that go to supply the artery, because sometimes you might need to vasoconstrict or vasodilate. Now let's compare among arteries, veins, and capillaries and get the flip out of here. Direction. Arteries take you from the heart to an organ. A vein from an organ to the heart. Capillaries from arterials to venules. From the arterial side to the venous side. From oxygenated to deoxygenated. And of course the capillary is the one that supplies the cell with oxygen and nutrients and dumps carbon dioxide and wastes. Arteries have fast blood flow with high pressure, veins slow blood flow with low pressure, capillaries extremely slow flow and extremely low pressure, valves, arteries are valveless, veins do have valves except the pulmonary vein, and the capillaries do not have valves. Lumen size, the cavity that's in the center. In the artery, it is small. You know why? Because the muscles take the entire space. Okay. In the veins, they are large because the muscles are thinner than the artery. And then the capillaries are extremely tiny. Forget the cavity. Tell me about the wall. Well, in the artery, the wall is very thick, elastic, and muscular. Very important words. But in a vein, the wall is thinner and less elastic. How about capillaries? Extremely thin. They don't have muscle. They just have one cell thickness. And this cell is endothelium. Tell me about the muscle layer. In arteries, they are very thick. Veins, thinner. Capillaries, non-existent. The cross-section. Take a cross-section in the artery. The cross-section is going to measure in millimeters in diameter. Veins, also millimeters. How about capillaries? Micrometers extremely tiny. By the way, if we get all of the capillaries out of your body and align them together side by side, they will rotate around planet Earth twice. That's how many capillaries you have. Tell me about the blood. Arteries have oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery. Veins deoxygenated except pulmonary veins. Capillaries, well, it's kind of a mix between arterioles and venules. The position of the vessel in your body. Arteries are super vital. They have very high pressure. Let's bury them deeper away from any superficial injury. But veins are superficial. Capillaries are very superficial. When I have a paper cut in my fingertip, I have injured my capillaries. When a nurse is taking blood out of my veins, that's my vein. When I have a car accident and lose my entire leg, I've cut everything, including arteries, and of course, the bleeding is huge. Some pearls for the pros. Arteries are divided into elastic arteries, muscular arteries, arterioles, and meta-arterioles. Elastic is like the aorta. Muscular or distributing is like the radial artery, ulnar artery, femoral artery, etc. Arterioles are very small. Meta-arterials have that pre-capillary sphincter. The word meta means change because I'm changing the direction of blood. If you remember, I'm shunting it away. I'm bypassing the capillary bed. Veins are divided into large veins like the superior and inferior vena cavae, medium and small veins like femoral vein, and venules just after the capillaries. Capillaries are divided into continuous capillaries, fenestrated capillaries, and sinusoidal capillaries, these are huge. Liver, spleen, bone marrow. What happens when you vasodilate an artery or an arterial? Whenever you vasodilate, you increase the surface area and you decrease the resistance. When you decrease the resistance, you will decrease the resistance after the heart. And this will lower your diastolic blood pressure, which will decrease your blood pressure. If you like this video, you will love my renal physiology course available at medicosisperfectionetis.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.